Amen. Clap those hands and praise the Lord, everybody. We have visitors tonight. Shabbat, we have visitors tonight. Shabbat Church, we have visitors tonight. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. David said it and I concur with his sentiments. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Would you clap for your neighbor who's sitting next to you? Can you do better for them or do you, do you love them? The Holy Spirit met us on Sunday. God help us. I'm still filled. I am filled. And that's very rare for me. But I'm filled with the experience and the outpour and the results of what the Lord allowed us to feel on Sunday morning. Let me say it like this. What a mighty God we serve. Again, what a mighty God we serve. I can't get over it. And let us remember that on this Sunday, we will be remaining after church for a corporate meeting with our members to hear what I have to say. This is a mandatory meeting. Look at two and three people and tell them it is mandatory. Especially all leaders, deacon, elders, praise team, musicians, push your food reservations all the way back. All right. We want to hear what the Lord has to say to all of us outside of the worship experience. I tell you, we have someone who watched us on Facebook who came from Winter Garden, Florida. Anthony Gerard Maddox, where are you? Please stand, sir. Can we thank God for Anthony? Thank you, Brother Anthony. I appreciate you coming here. This person met one of our members, Tariah, um, I guess, on her job. This young lady is moved here. Uh, she visited one of our churches, and tonight she wanted to visit with us. Her name is Deandra Caesar. Where are you, Deandra Caesar? Can we clap for Deandra? Another Facebook experience, Empowering Word Fellowship in Palaka, Florida. Palaka, Florida, Empowering Word Fellowship. One of my sons, Ter Terrell Hughes, who lives in New Jersey, but he's a son of this house. He uh, led them this way. Deacon Cassius and Kenya Thomas, where are you? Please stand, because we want to love on you. I like that he clapped back for y'all. Give me some highs in these mics. He clapped back. He clapped back for y'all as well. And then, a longtime friend of mine, I used to see him here, know him from Salvation and Deliverance Church in New York, the Apostle Brown, many, many years ago, he played a very important part of that ministry and still does. He's also a friend of Terrell Hughes, but a brother of mine's Elder Gregory Kelly. Stan, Elder Kelly, can we thank God for him? Y'all clap better. Now, I don't see him, but I want to do it anyway because I don't see everybody, but I know he's working Today, someone turned 12 years old. He's the son of Izzy Brown. This is Isaac Brown Jr. Can we thank God for him? Where is he? Yeah, right there. Wave at us so we can see him. 12 years old. We appreciate leadership in this church. I said, we appreciate leadership in this church. Especially top tier leadership, especially voices who God has graced to travel the length and the breadth of this country 
and they affect lives. Y'all don't have normal pastors who are just local. Y'all have leaders who God has given influence across the globe. And we're saying that in the person of our executive pastor, Dr. Sonia Mixon. And we have one of the greatest associate pastors this side of heaven. He also has national thank you recognition as well. He goes as much as we do. Thank God that he works for the airline where he can pick up, go and get right back. His father is our senior father and his mother. Come on, y'all clap better. Father Hope and Dr. Barbara. Tonight we are grace. I can't wait to get into the word of God, but we are grace to have one of our sister churches from Tampa with us. And he is a miracle. God has blessed him. Come on, Pastor and Prophet Anthony J. Brown. We want to salute him in the name of the Lord. Last but not least, to Jesus Christ this evening, the Son of the living God. Thank you. We had, we had church on last Friday in Gainesville. It was phenomenal, but I still say this Sunday past, the Holy Ghost met us here. And whatever you needed, it was in the room on Sunday. I don't care what it was. If you were saved at all, you can feel the presence of the Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. He showed us he's still God. Can I hear amen? I'll be leaving on tomorrow with a few of our members who were blessed to take off to go if the flies can appear tomorrow night. You pray for your pastor. I'm making them put it online. We'll be at the Holy Convocation of Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Y'all can clap for that along with so many speakers, so many speakers, singers, some of the best singers, Melvin Chris Bell and Zaccardi Cortez and Kim Burrell singing on my night, S.Y. Younger, Bishop Brandon Jacobs, Bishop Brian Moore and that bald-headed fly guy, Bishop Todd Hall, we're going to be there on tomorrow night in Charlotte. In Charlotte, North Carolina. Right after that, I'll be leaving Charlotte, going to Hamlet, North Carolina. Uh, put that fly up and let me name some of those speakers. Yeah, just too many Prophet Brian Kahn, Bishop Michael Blue, Bishop Darius Nixon. Oh, Lord, just so many people. I can't name all these people. But I'll be closing their convocation on Friday night. And then I'm guest speaker here on Sunday morning. I'm going to be the guest speaker right here. We are still talking about what? And I heard somebody say, order my steps, so they've been studying. But we are still talking about what tonight? I won't preach this tonight, but let me say this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Look at someone and quote that to them. You don't know where it is, but it's in the Bible. Tell them, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Bible also says this, he that cometh to God, I can't, must first believe. Do I have some talk? And he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. You don't get to call him once. You got to keep calling him. 
Somebody practice and call Jesus one or two times. And grandma said, if you call Jesus, he will answer prayer. I want to quote that again, but that's my Sunday morning text. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is. That he's what? He's God. And he is the answer to every problem that you have. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is what? A rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. Church, say amen. So I'm excited. I'm on my sixth Bible study on faith. I'm on my 13th sermon between Sunday and Wednesday on faith. I'm not ready to move from it yet. We're almost ready. But I want to try something a little different tonight. Do I have 10 people tonight? Young people, y'all had a hard day today. But Romans chapter 10. And the reason why I talk to my young people more because they're the next church. And if I can get them to talk where you don't talk, they'll have a better experience with whoever the next pastor shall be. Romans chapter 10. Verses 13 through 17, and then Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 28. Matthew chapter 10, the verses are 13 through 17. And then Matthew chapter 7, the supportive text begins at verse 24 through 28. Here beginneth the reading of God's word and may he sanctify it in all of our hearts. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He doesn't force it on you. You must call him. My young people a little tired tonight. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. Some of you tonight might find out you ain't saved. You just been touched. And sometimes being touched by God can last a long time. You can be touched and not changed. But you can't be saved and not changed. Look at somebody and tell them if you're saved there ought to be some changes. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear, y'all don't like this, without a preacher? And how, there's a lot of questions being answered here. How shall they preach except they be sent? I'm hoping everyone is engaged tonight. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach not the gospel, the gospel of peace. Your preaching cannot start confusion. It has to settle some things in your spirit. Maybe I should take a survey. How many of you need God to settle some things? Let me. All right, good. Well then, well then, this should be a good Bible study. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, bring glad tidings of good things! Exclamation point. 
Look at somebody and tell them, stop bringing me negative news. That's not the gospel. Tell them you wouldn't bring it to me if you weren't hanging around negative people. See, see, when I'm finished with this, I'm going to trace where your problem began. A lot of people want a solution, but they don't want to admit that they have a problem or could be the problem. My young adults are back and my grown-ups done left the building. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? I enjoyed the praise team today. So then faith. See, all of these scriptures was to get us to faith. The answer to all these questions and issues is located in faith. And without it, it is impossible. So then faith, stay with me, associate pastor here tonight, cometh by hearing. Not by praying, not by prophecy, not by singing, not by dancing. You can have a prayer life and not have a faith life. You can get a prophecy from heaven and it never come to pass because it landed upon a spirit that does not have enough faith to get what was spoken done. You can put an apple seed in the ground. It may not ever become an apple. It might grow as a tree, but never yield apples because the soil must be fertile enough to get the fruit to come on the tree. Some of you have enough to become a tree and to grow, just not to become productive. Look at somebody and tell them faith is for produce. Tell them that. So then faith coming by hearing, I'm going to teach it. Hearing by the word of God and I'm going to mess you up because y'all won't talk to me. So I'm going to mess you up. So I'm going to mix verse 17 with verse 14. Okay. I'm going to go from 17 and go all the way back to verse 14 and see who will catch it. So then faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God, how then shall they call on the name of him whom, whom they've not believed? How shall, how shall they believe on him who they have not served? And how can they hear without a preacher? So if faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, who's giving you the word of God? No, no, it may not be a preacher. That's why your faith ain't working because you took it from an illegal source. You need the gospel, not the gossip. Once your gospel has been infected by gossip, you cancel what the produce would have been. Why is it quiet now up here? I only have the same people up here every Sunday. Why is it quiet up here? Y'all help me. But let's go over to Matthew chapter 7 because I want to blow your minds with the scripture today. Verse 24 through 28. This is just a parable. This is a story that is so significant that if I was to turn Bible study into a medium mini church service, it would be on this scripture. I'm not going to do it, but this would be the one. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, not just hear them, do them. I don't have nobody. I will liken whoever does what they hear. To be as a wise man, which built his house upon or upon a rock. I wish I had folk to my right talking. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. It fell not. 
because it was founded upon a rock. Y'all better hear me today. And now everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Same circumstances occurred. Rains descended, flood came, wind blew, beat upon the house, and it fell. And not only did it fall, I can't hear nobody in the middle. Great was the fall of it. <sighs> Are y'all here tonight? Or... And it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. You may be seated at his doctrine. I want to call this one, even though faith is what our series is on, look at somebody that looks like they want to communicate tonight and tell them my foundation is faith. And then flip it, and faith is my foundation. And without faith, I'm getting ready for Sunday, and without faith, the importance of this particular Bible study is to show all of you that you have to participate in what you're believing God for. God does not just do something to be doing it. Or for talkers, he's not doing it to prove to you he can. God does not have to prove to any of us anything. And for this reason, you won't hear me, he's letting what you should have been delivered from stay longer to see whether you still have enough faith to trust him. Some of you are in extended situations that should have expired a long time ago. But now this has become a test of your faith. I'm about to put some of you out the building. You can't jump like that on Sunday and lose it by Wednesday. I know I can't. Your faith must be managed by you. If it's yours, then you need to find out what to do with it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to stay calm till it touch me. You must stay where your faith can be fed, fueled, and not forfeited. Because some of you don't have any more faith because you let who was next to you frustrate your faith. And there's a scripture that says frustrated faith. I won't preach it yet. There's a scripture that says, and they frustrated my faith. Mm -hmm. You need to be where faith can be fed. What did I say? And fueled but not forfeited. Faith cometh by hearing, which could translate that you hear or what you hear or give heed to the most becomes what creates your belief system. I'm, thank you, thank you, sir. And I'm going to go further. And that the belief system then becomes your truth. I want to teach, but my leaders ain't there. So if you continue to hear flawed information, not backed up by proper research, you will have a flawed faith system that won't be able to stand the test of time. No, this is not Google. When it's somebody else's information, I tell you research show. No, this is my study. Let me go up two more sentences and read it again, sentences, so that some of you can get a little more engaged because 
you only have a few weeks until this month is over. And if you don't get it, it's because you forfeited your faith. No, no, you're not going to blame it on the preacher, the bishop, the church, witchcraft. We're going to blame it on you. My faith looks up to thee. Oh, y'all, thou lamb of cow. I know y'all are Savior divine. Now hear me. While I pray, Lord, take all this guilt, sin away. Lord, let me from this day be holy thine. But the first lyrics of the song is, whose faith is it? Mine. Who did you allow to frustrate, not you, your faith? Who got on your nerves so much that you can no longer strengthen your faith because you no longer have your faith where it belongs and you no longer want to even hear preaching? Who intoxicated and infected you so bad that they were able to run you away from where your faith needs to be present to even be exercised? Can't make it to church. How many times you can't make it? The woman with the issue of blood was bleeding on her way and got blessed before she got home. How long are you going to frustrate your own faith by not taking it where it belongs? So that it can show you whether this is a demonic attack or a test of my faith. Look at your neighbor. They better not answer because they don't know the answer. Tell them which one is it. Which one is it? Is it a demonic attack? Or is it a test of your faith? Therefore, faith coming by hearing a system, Pastor, which could translate that you are what you hear and what you give heed to the most. That creates a belief system. That belief system becomes your truth. So if you continue to hear flawed information not backed by proper research, you will have a flawed faith system that won't be able to stand the test of time. Touch them and tell them I've got to take the blame for some of this. I have to. Let me go further. Your faith muscles, somebody flex your faith. I, I know you don't know how. Your faith muscles must be exercised by you going through something stronger than yourself. Yep, they understand, you don't. When you're going through something that don't make sense, that's God saying you're losing muscle. And to get muscle, you must be put under a certain amount of pressure and you must use everything in you to get what's heavy. in medicine but that don't get it off you I believe in doctors but what they keep doing is cutting a piece of you out of you but when Jesus heals by faith he doesn't cut nothing he don't decrease nothing you don't take nothing all you got to do is believe what he says Oh, y'all don't like, on Christ the solid. I told you I could slip into a mini church service, but I'm going to stay out of it. Don't get mad at Bible study. This is where we come to face ourselves. Some of you don't have faith. I've watched you now for years, and you have dressed better, but you have not become better. Driving better cars, living in better places, but never becoming a better person. Because you got to stay away from church to get all of this stuff. And what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? See, Satan's biggest job is to make you believe God is prospering you outside of his system. This is a hoax. Well, I got to do what I got to do to do what I need to do. No, you got to do God. 
And you should be upset with yourself, not with me. If you grew up in church, why didn't church grow in you? The issue is you don't like church people, but the same folk outside are the same folk that go to church everywhere. You are not making sense. One day I'm going to do a study on what is church people because I need to know from the Bible what are church people. I can't stand the things that go on in church. Where else do they go on? Do you like the job? How about your marriage? How about your children? You're going to abandon them too? So if there's church mess, what's children mess? What's marriage mess? How come church mess is the only thing you get to avoid, but the other mess you let hang around? We're going to get to it. I told you, I concur with David. I was glad. And I'm trying to get y'all to feel that way when they said to me, not that there's not a mess in church, there's a mess in the whole world. But church is where I get to hear God's word and God's word fuels my faith and my faith gives me the power to stand the storm. You follow? I cannot let the devil keep me away from the place where my spiritual muscles oh yeah, get to grow and flex. That help me lift the pressures of life when I walk out this door. That makes people that thought they can make me weak be like, you getting strong, huh? That's because I stay where my faith can be fed and fueled, not forfeited. Oh boy, I love this side. I used to hate this side of the church. This becoming the best side now. Your faith muscles must be exercised by bringing yourself into this kingdom fitness center. The church is the kingdom fitness center. Let me talk to folk. Where someone is pressing into you the word of God and when the word is too heavy, you need a spotter. Where the word is not understood or grasped, you need a coach. You cannot do this on your own. You cannot increase your own faith by reading the scripture. You must hear it properly translated by the men and women of God. I promise you, for you who have been in the gym and fitness centers like I have and Montez is, and you would scream even in... in even in my 60s, I still go. And that's this. Ain't nothing like working out with some, someone who knows what they're doing. But when you get somebody that's looking away while you under pressure, they can cause you to crack your chest. And oh, y'all crazy. And everything because they really don't have your best interests at heart. You need somebody that can handle your weight. And they have their eyes on you, not on everything else. Oh, yeah. That's why some of you go to church, but church never helps you because your mind is everywhere else. Texting while in church. You're crazy. No, seriously, you're borderline demonic. Even the two that just did it, you're borderline demonic. That you can't give God your undivided attention in his house and tell someone when I'm in church, you got to hit me after. And now your soul is all infected because who you're texting is a demonic presence that keeps getting you back where you're not supposed to be. How do you freshly text in church about sinning after church while in church? Borderline demonic. You should have a conscience. Yes, 
nothing is better than working out with someone that can also, from one person who will jump, get in your head and make you believe you can do this. Look at two and three people, tell them that with some, with some type of assurance and see whether they enhance your abilities. You can do this. You can do it. All you need, you don't believe it, is the right person to believe in you. When I got in the gym and was very, very serious about it, I was able to lift two times my weight in everything. Used to train Timothy, now he can train me. I could lift more than any of the kids in the church. I used to squat over 415 pounds at 185. Lift, look at folk, keep bragging. No, I'm teaching. Lift 385 on the chest press. Can't do that stuff now, but you can rebuild the muscle because muscles have a memory. And when you sit in church and listen enough, when the devil approaches you, you start remembering what Bishop said. What did, what did executive pastor preach? What did associate pastor preach? You know what? I got a scripture for that. Not a prayer. Not a prophecy. What does the scripture say about my situation? And Montez, when I did it for the first time because the person believed in me, I thought that I had accomplished the world. And then you come back a week later and they put a little more weight on there again. And you be like, what are you doing? You see, when you're afraid, you question what's going on. What, what, what are you doing? You're trying to kill me. We just did this last week. This another week. If you want the muscles to keep growing and forming, we must put it under pressure. So when you say, Lord, because you didn't know what you asked for, give me a little more faith, you ask for a little more pressure. I need more faith. God said, put more weight on there. And then God said, now get up under it. They tell you this in professional weight training, weight lifting, power lifting, or anything else. I'm just getting through here for five of you who just made me happy. They say, before you lift it, you must see yourself doing it. See, you don't know what I'm talking about. So before you do the bench, you got to see yourself on the bench, lifting. And once the pitch is in your head, you get under it quick and you execute. Some of you take too long after God shows you something. All right, let me get out. Some of you just take too long because you're waiting for it to be safe. I don't believe I'm healed till I feel better. No, feelings have nothing to do with healing. Faith has to do with your facts, not your feelings. I got the middle back. I got a few guests over here. There is no such thing. What did I say? Thank you for those who are in Bible study. There is no such thing spiritually as knowing God properly outside of knowing his word. Let me say it again. Then I'm going to get a little brutal with it. Because that's my personality. I'm Dr. Phil, not Oprah. There is no such thing scripturally as knowing God properly outside of knowing his word. Now, 
You that are waiting on me to get brutal is simple as this. If you don't know his word, you don't know him. You can go to church and never meet God. Okay, I'm going to leave all this alone. You can meet his climate. You can meet the atmosphere. You can even have an experience. But you can never get to know him outside of the word of God. Let me talk to talkers. In the beginning. See, y'all was not music, was not prayer, was the word. The word was not just with God. And when the word and God become synonymous to you, things that were not made appear. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. So your faith ain't working because you actually don't believe God and his word are one. A God that cannot keep his word is not a God at all. What did I just say? A God? Let me tell you who some of your gods are. I'm almost finished this Bible study. Let me tell you who your God is. And the first three that jump up that I know are serious about this teaching, your life will change. Your God is whoever you give your ear to the most. That's your God. And your belief system is being built off of who you give your ear to the most. And if those people are negative by nature, you have an infected faith. And that's why you see life negative in everybody but yourself. I know I need a pastor, but I may not need you. But go get a pastor. And go get a pastor you can finally stay with. Stay somewhere. Because faith don't bounce around. Faith is firm. It's not made out of rubber. It don't write bounce checks. Am I boring them? Faith is a result of correct preaching and teaching. Under this, I've got three more paragraphs, but under this, I did a little notation. And to the two of you, and I'm always prophesying, you don't know I am. When I say jump or scream, whatever I say comes upon those that obey, but you'll never know that. You will never know that because you want, I hear the Lord say, if, if thou would have jumped and run, you done missed about a thousand checks and a thousand miracles. Why would God tell me to jump when he know I got a bad leg? Because he wants your faith to get that bad leg working. That's why. Why would God tell me smile when he knows what I went through today? Because he need to not let it go through you. The issue is faith does not agree with your feelings. I keep telling you that over and over again. When your feelings are stronger than your faith, your faith has been infected. And it's borderline forfeiting. And if anybody know this, Alvin Ailey, the kingdom Alvin Ailey, my son, myself, visitors from New York and wherever you're from, should be able to scream on this. The hardest thing to do is to work out, accomplish goals and reach your goals, then stop for two years and have to start. Let me tell you, that start over process, right? Where you think you can just get under what you used to live. 20 pounds will feel like 100 pounds. You'll be like, wait a minute, I used to kill this. Where your faith is not being utilized, you then deteriorate in that area. So some of y'all got to stop testifying to people about the miracles you saw and how God used you when he ain't using you no more. That makes him look bad. 
that the pressure you under now don't match the testimonies you told years ago and that God would do something for you way back in a certain year that he ain't doing today? Talk to me, middle. It ain't that God ain't doing it. You don't have the faith to let him perform. And for God to show that your faith is working, he's got to put you in a situation you weren't supposed to be able to handle. I wish somebody scream on this. You got enough nosy people to make God look good. I promise you got enough nosy people. And them folk are in your life to see how you maneuver, how you, how you navigate. How did you handle the report or the diagnosis of the doctor? How did you handle finding out that he or she cheated? How did you handle finding out that your best friend is the one that told all your business? How did you come out of that? And now do you qualify to still brag about a God that you can't trust? Should some of us take a sabbatical from preaching until your faith has been restored? Because now this makes some of us a false representation of the word that we're feeding other people. If I'm making sense, will you tell me? I put a notation, the job of a chiropractor. is to help you become realigned. Let me, let me talk to the left side. I, I can't keep talking to the middle. My chair is this way. And sometimes the pain you're feeling is not injury. It's correctness. Even though you say you're hurting me. No, you were hurt when you got here, but you learned how to live out of alignment. So now your limp is your new walk. Y'all ain't talking to me. And as long as you lean to the right, you don't feel no pain. So you adjust to a new posture that is actually an incorrect posture. Because to get back into alignment... You have to handle pain. You can't tell who's aligning you. Don't touch me here. Don't touch me there. Get off the table. Either you want to get up and walk right or keep on doing your thing. That's up to you. The only person that's going to tell you that's a nice walk is somebody using you. So let me come back. That's a nice walk. I like it. That's swag. That ain't swag. So now you got to hang around a new group who compliments your impediment, right? Because everybody else that's telling you you need to be properly aligned is not your friend. the hope you are old enough older than I and have an experience enough that surpasses mine but I grew up as a child when you were in your teens I was still a child you were in your teens going over to your 20s when I was a child I know for those who didn't see it I know when people had lumps on their breasts that the mother would touch it and it would dissolve I saw people in wheelchairs that when y'all said rise they would walk where did they go? You saw it not to receive it? You saw it not to inherit that power? It was in your grandma and your mama and skipped over you? Hold on, what happened? And if that be the case, who do we take our issues to?
Now I hear people, someone is getting real fly now. And you know Bishop loves controversy. You getting real fly. What if the person God is using is not living right? Now I don't know how that question came out with faith, but let me help you. And let me help the three other negative people who may have been texting the same person. Catch this. When you went to get surgery because you needed to no longer be in pain, did you ask the surgeon, is he divorced? Did he smoke this morning? Does he cuss? What's his habits? No, no, no. Talk to me. Did you interview the professional who could get your son out of jail and ask him, is he cheating on his wife? Why y'all don't ask other people business, but when it comes down to the preacher, you want to know what you doing. I don't want nobody touching me who ain't living right. The doctor ain't living right. Look at y'all. You're going to protect your doctor but not your pastor. Y'all funny. It's real good. The doctor ain't living right. Lawyers are liars by nature. And you know when they're defending you, they lying about a you that don't exist. Tax people help you get money on things that you don't even have to write taxes off on. This is, this is funny. But we all need the resume of a preacher. Evangelist, apostle, bishop, whatever the title is. You know why? Because Satan's ploy is to make sure your faith never gets up to par by making you seek God on your own outside of scriptural context. How can they hear? No, no, I'm not saying this for you to respect me because I respect me. I'm saying this because I didn't get where I was without a preacher. Oh, yeah. My father was my father. He was the assistant pastor, but he was not my pastor. I believe certain things happened when he got to the mouth of my pastor. Then I said to my father, pastor said so and so. He said, boy, stand on it. The word has to be spoken, then confirmed. Confirmed and then activated. I, I, I don't believe it. See, I got some demons in here. One planted. Oh, y'all, see, it's first got to be planted by the leader. Then it's watered by your company. And then one planted, another one watered. God gives. God only steps in when the process is correct. The process must be correct. What did I just say? The process. You can't be married and know who your next husband is. That's not a correct process. God would never show you a future while you're connected to the past. That is not correct. Some of my musicians ain't saying nothing tonight. Maybe they involved with something, but they don't know I know. But listen. Everybody has to try to live right. I don't care who you are. Stay a lead. We're going to continue. But everybody that's a member of a church, your objective of being there is, Lord, make me better so that I can be used for your glory. And y'all stop attacking women who ain't got enough faith to tell you no. Don't text them no more. I'm going to read the next text over this pulpit. Text another one of them. See if I'm playing. Be happy with what God gave you. Or give up what he gave you and treat the next one real. You ain't no gangster. You a prankster. Gangsters do things properly. Anybody thinks you're strong when they're weak. I 
became who I am today because I submitted under authority. I did not care what my authoritarian was doing. He or she had to face God. Oh, yeah. Y'all got this twisted. We ain't got to succumb to you. At all. I ask advice. I don't hold no meetings without Father Hope being present because I need someone wiser than me there, but I'm the pastor. But the pastor is wise enough to know someone has a little more wisdom than he. So you surround yourself with something that helps protect who you are. You don't go in it by yourself. So when somebody lies and say, Bishop told me this, Father Hook can be like, no, no, no. And I just heard two people again. Well, Father Hope would lie for you. I don't want nobody that's going to lie for me. See, you brought that up because that's what you hang with. As for me, I like people around me that can be like, that's not good, Bishop. Bishop, watch your back, Bishop. Bishop, don't ever say that again. Iron sharpens. Yeah, the only thing that's afraid of a knife is a piece of wood, but we'll deal with that another time too. Some of you are just too sharp for the company you keep, but let's come back. Berlin, because you know I love you, tell me one day, text me, because you have my number, which is rare. Why do people not want to do better? What's wrong? Even in your music ministry, you want to play better. You want to do something you've never done. And you can't do that being insecure around who could do it better than you. Some people are going to do the same thing all the time because they don't hang with who's sharper than them. And they can't hear from the Bible. Well, I could do it, but that's not what my, my gift is. What are you talking about? You're intimidated. You're insecure. You're not a professional. You just know how to do your hustle well. And your hustle made you think you're irreplaceable. But you were replaced before you left. Now you better ask, faith makes moves in the dark. Don't be fooled now. I don't want no one in my church, leadership or other, feeling like they're not replaceable. Let me make it plain one good time. Everybody in here is replaceable, including me. See, you don't hear most leaders say that. Everyone in here is replaceable, including the pastor. See, I can replace you, but only he can replace me. You see the difference? And when I replace you, you're hurt. We move forward. When he replaces me, I'm probably going to hell because I was a hypocrite. So the penalty for the leader is always greater than the penalty of the follower. You don't live at the top and eat at the bottom. Watch yourself. Bottom feeders, y'all got to watch out. Okay, let me come back. God requires more of them who know his word better than most. You cannot know all these scriptures and been in church for 20 years and think God won't hold you accountable. Let me talk to five people. To whom much has been given. 
And that ain't talent to sing and all of that. I don't know why you think that's your talent. It's what you know of God. So to whom God has revealed himself to the most, he expects more out of you than the average human being. My, my father, grandfather, and great-grandfathers was preachers. Well, how you turn out like this? How you the worst brand of your family? How you have four generations of preachers and you a pimp? How does it end like that? Four generations of holy and you a hoax. How does it end like that? Faith is supposed to go from one generation... Oh, y'all cry to the next generation. Now, I'm going to admit something, then I'm going to take you to a resting place of joy. But let me say this to ten folk who can handle thick word. When you are the product of your family that Satan attacks the most, it's because God expects more out of you than your whole generation. Therefore, he's allowing you to go through more than anyone in your family because you're about to have more faith than anyone in your family. You're about to become the testimony of your entire generation to let the devil know, I don't care what you did to them. It stops with me. Look at somebody and tell them, it stops with me. Never compare your situation to another person. If a person told you they lost 50 pounds in 30 days, don't you think you can do it? I'm telling you. Because most of the time they be lying. I'm just trying to help y'all out. Then they try to act like they didn't have a sleeve or a tummy tuck. They be like, oh no, I did this the natural way. Sometimes people be lying. And you out here trying to use their system that they actually did not use getting frustrated because it's taking you too long when the person that fed it to you never gave you the right details at all. Here's how I want to close this and bring some joy into your life. You have to keep your faith in the kingdom fitness center. That's the gym, the church. Let me, let me do it like this, Tawana, and let me see if four of you will talk because I've been a victim of it. I've been blessed enough to have a small gym in my home. And sometimes we use the home gym as an excuse not to go to the facility, right? Like y'all use virtual church. Right? And you actually didn't fully watch. Because then when the person asks you, what did I say? Oh, oh, I was on the phone at that time. You actually, most people who don't have an ethic to go to the place where they can get the best results and do it at home, they never get the results they could have gotten at the facility. And if you ever felt like this, because I have, and you jump up, I know God's going to bless you. You made a vow, I'm going to start the gym on Monday. You get up, you start walking around, you take two phone calls, you eat a heavy breakfast, and you say, I'll go tomorrow. See, that's all, y'all. Then you say, when this go down, I'll just do a few things in the home facility. And normally the time you spend at the fitness center is way more time than you work out at the home facility. You know why? Let me talk, talk, because you don't see other examples. 
we come to a place called church in a church building so you can see how other people carry their load while they're struggling and if they can look that good why you look so bad and when I go to the gym I don't look at those who look the worst I look at those that have correct posture those who get results and I ask questions without abusing them and I finish what I begin People talking about at their home facilities. I've walked two miles today. How long did it take? Two hours. You weren't walking, you was crawling. That ain't no walk. That's a baby crawl. See, you don't know what the real mile should look like if you're training, if you've never been to the facility. You're giving yourself credit for a two mile walk that took two hours. Where were you going? Now, some of you are offended, but you should be sparked. Your faith should be kicking in because you've been abusing yourself. And then right after that two-minute walk, you get a 2,500-calorie meal. Come on, y'all stop that. Uh, I, I walk two miles a day. I'm starving. I can hear it if you just said you ran two miles. See, I try to help people. I'm overweight right now. But I ain't lazy like some of y'all. I force myself to get up. Even though I'm retired and can stay in bed, get up with your lazy self. If you cannot speak reality to yourself, something is wrong with you. Stop buying bigger clothes. Wear them tight and get frustrated. Not be able to put them on and get angry. Don't buy them big to make us think you losing weight. Don't do that to us. See, if you can laugh through that, there's hope. Because that's somebody telling you the truth without trying to discourage you. And they utilize their own self as an example. I love myself when I really put on the right clothes and get sharp. But you got to go home and pull them clothes off. And when you walk through your bathroom mirror, y'all ain't talking to me and you turn sideways. You get frustrated with yourself. If you don't, it's because you're not faithful to yourself. You step on the scale four times to see if it's broke. I've been there. You even go buy a new one. I'm going to Walmart. You got one like the doctor's office. Faith without works. All right, I'm going to say it again. Faith without works. It does not just happen because you say, I believe God. You must participate in the maintenance and management of what you are believing God to do. I close with this. Your faith, last paragraph, is your foundation. Look at somebody and tell them, my faith is my foundation. Put that in the lower thirds. All of you that are watching, I'm going to start engaging our uh, members that are in virtual world soon. But look at somebody and tell them, my faith is my foundation. A foundation, look at me, is built for something else to stand on. 
You that are not paying attention, that's where you lost. You lost already. A foundation is constructed for something visible to stand on. Let me go this route. The foundation is not seen after something is built upon it. But the foundation gets credit for how what's built stands. All right, hold on. All right, I'm, I'm going to come back around the corner again. I can tell whether your faith is real by how what you're doing stands storms. If God said that's your marriage, your husband and wife, then that marriage should be able to stand a storm. If every time something happens, you're talking about leaving, your faith is probably, it's probably gone. If every time you go through something, you want to leave it, your faith is probably gone. You probably have no faith at all. Let me do this. Minister Robinson, maybe you'll catch this. Two people in the book of Matthew. I'm closing. I let y'all read it. Matthew 7. Two people constructed the exact houses. Two people who built the exact same house experienced the exact same storm in the exact order. You didn't read it, huh? See, because you didn't read it, you don't have faith for it. In Matthew 7, 24 through 28, two homes have been erected. And the homes that have been erected have been built by your works. The storm, the climate is what God controls. God decided not to use sunshine after you built it. He used a storm. To see if what you built had a real foundation. All right, everybody missed that too. You've been rebuking the devil that does not exist. Because every time you go through something you're not familiar with, the devil is a liar. No, no, let God be God. Why y'all keep bringing the devil into a narrative that he has no power? He only has power when you mention him. Y'all ain't talking. What you need to do is start talking more about God. Christians should be experts at talking about Jesus. Why are y'all so excellent in bringing in devils? I can't hear nobody. I'm confused how y'all see more spirits than Holy Ghost. I am so perplexed that you are Holy Ghost filled but see more in the demonic world than you do into the kingdom. Maybe you're from there. Maybe you're a dual agent. Maybe you are a sheep, a wolf dressed in sheep clothing. Maybe you are sent to frustrate someone's faith. When I sit in my chair and I go to church, Dr. Deborah say something to me on this, and I go to church because I need a breakthrough, and I know my pastor knows the word, I know my executive pastor knows the word, I know assistant pastor, search pastor, they know the word. I go there with expectancy that what I'm under, I'm going to be able to push off me. The worst thing you could do is sit where you can get help, and somebody who didn't want help sit next to you, right? And they be talking to you, looking sad, chewing gum, looking around. That's a spirit from hell. You need somebody who sits near you and say, we're going to get out of this today. I ain't playing. You need, sometimes it can be your, your husband, your wife. Sometimes you got to separate from the family and sit somewhere else. You got to sit where your faith can be fed. Maybe some of you are going through the same thing because you sit next to the same person every service. Same road. This my road. You better find the road where God is. I see some of you cute couples. I sit near my wife. 
even if I got married, I ain't sitting there. We just argued early this morning. We gonna come together, but we going back in peace because I'm gonna sit somewhere else. Y'all just be faking with people coming in here. You didn't even say hello or hug her when, when she was outside. Now she in church. Got your arm around it so one of the homies don't see her. Y'all just finished arguing before you got here. That is cap all day long. He or she ain't even here tonight because of you. See, if we stop playing with it and let it do its job, let the chiropractor, let me, man, let me get out of here. It's painful, not injury. Pain is the result you did something right. Injury is you did something wrong. All right, y'all didn't catch that. If they get what's wrong out of you through surgery, you feel pain in that area, that means they did it right. Not wrong. The problem's out of you, but the pain still exists. Injury is, while they were trying to get the thing out of you, they punctured another area. That's the oops factor. Let me quickly show you this. Same two houses. Exact demographics, exact architectural design. God sent the same climate to both houses. On the one side where the house stood, I'm going to see who jumped. It's because that house listened. The Bible said, I liken this person unto this house. That when you listen to good instructions and go through what you have to, when situations around you start going crazy, you will stand. But if you listen, if you hear it and refuse to listen, you will fall and great is the fall. The blame of both parties standing or falling for one person is it blames it on the foundation. This house was built upon a rock. This house was built upon sand. Now I've been living here for 31 years. No one knew until four or five years when I started pastoring y'all, I lost my life. Now Dr. Hall live in Florida. Listen to me and see if one person will jump because you want a blessing. You cannot use the same soil here that you use in New York. That's why there's no basements. Because your substructure does not have the ability to handle it. So you can want what somebody else want, but do you have the ability? I want to talk structurally to some folk who get happy we going home. When you see skyscrapers in New York and in Chicago and little few in Detroit, you don't have them really here, just a downtown town skyline, it's okay. But when you go to these big cities, you will see structures that are high. They are built high because of how low the foundation was dig. So when you see God blessing folk and giving them a beautiful skyline, you got to check their foundation. If you try to duplicate what I have, but you don't have as deep and can't go as deep as I can go. When the storm hits your structure, it will fall. But if your anchor holds, yeah, I could have had many to, and grips that. God's taking some of you as high as you can go by seeing how low he can take you. If I can't take you down before I take you up, you don't have faith. 
I need you to feel like you are dead, buried alive. I want to take you so down, nobody likes you, no one understands you, nobody wants to talk to you. But when they see what I'm constructing you to become, they're going to have to look up to you. Because I'm about to make you a skyline. Yeah, I just feel like I'm going further down. Go! And go as low as you can go. The question should be, I got to close now because I feel the church. I'm going to wait till Sunday. But the question should be for 10 of you who will clap and scream, how am I this low still living? Oh, I can preach at any time. I may have to drop of a dime. How am I this low? How am I every negative thing a person calls me, but I'm still here? Dr. Deborah, I've been called everything recently, even a homosexual. I don't know how in the world. Look at my men. You've been called that? Yeah. I said called. Because I see one or two looking at me funny. You want to know the truth. We could talk after church. I said, call. The old mothers had it first. They said, I've been lied on. Cheated. Y'all talked about. Y'all forgot. Mistreated. They told you I've been beautiful. Scorned. They keep going low and low. Talked about. Showed you more. I've been up. I've been down. I've been leveled to the ground. But as long as I've got Jesus. I have gone to the lowest. Am I the only one, then let's prepare to go, that has ever had a moment with yourself? No, forget others, forget your pastor. A, 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 a real healthy moment with yourself. If you did, it looked like this for those who were screaming. You said, God, I don't know how I got in this place Lord I know I did a few things but I didn't know I would go this far but if you help me see some of you ain't been there get out of this I won't promise you I'll be perfect but I promise you I won't be what I was before I went into this. that's what's important who are you when you come out of it and what has faith made out of you? You don't have faith if you're not going through several cycles of change. You all call it evolving. I disagree, but one day we'll talk about it. I do not believe that change and evolution are the same. I just want you to know that. Okay, I get tired of rookies who learned a few terms using it and then y'all try to live it, but it don't work because they have not done proper research. I need a prophetic activation. I don't believe in that. You can, but I don't. And if I'm your pastor, you shouldn't because how can you activate what's not in there? Just because you have a desire to be a prophet don't mean you have the goods. And what you have must be a gift, not a talent given by God. Then we get to stir up the gift by the laying on of hands. But if you don't have the gift and you're not a gift to people, there is nothing to be stirred. Oh, I know it's true. You ain't got to grade me. There is nothing to stir up if your gift does not make you a gift to people. Gifted people who don't like people are terrorists. But let me get out of there. 
use your gift to speak good to folk you like and damnation to folk you don't. That ain't no gift. That's witchcraft. All day. Every day. Two or three of you have tried to curse me. You ain't seen that it ain't work yet. I bind him. Lord God, get him. Have you not recognized it's not work yet? Oh, you in here. I've heard your conversations in the spirit. But have you recognized that it has not worked? God going to get him. You let me know about it here. God does not work through your emotions. Your faith is being tested by you being in something you don't understand. If anyone's ever said this, you're close to passing your test. Why me, Lord? Or something like, here we go again. See, all of these terms and phrases are folk who are holding on to God and they don't know how long they can hold on. Lord, one more thing, I'm going to lose my mind. All of these phrases, we use them before you borrowed them. I've been to the physician. You go for one thing in the area that you have concern. And then they come out, not just with a diagnosis about that area. But most of the time you hear, we found something else. But I didn't come here asking you about nothing else. See, I don't get no help. Now you don't put more worry on top of what I'm worried about. While you went looking for the area that you have a hint that there's something wrong, they found what made that area agitated. This area is malfunctioning because of something you have no awareness of. That's when you need a church, a pastor, because we get to tell you the hidden things that makes the other things make sense. Why is the devil attacking my marriage? We get to preach a sermon on the hidden things of marriage that makes you handle the things that you now see. Both parties don't get faith at the same time, but one of them get enough faith to be like, we need to revisit this. Let's talk. Let's read this scripture together and see what's it. The other one might still be mad. I don't want to read no Bible, but God has to increase the faith of one person at a time to get the whole picture correct. Am I right? So some of y'all got to be a little stronger than the weak folk you hanging with. Ain't nobody got to tell me. I brag in the things of God. I brag in the things of God. I boast in the things of God. Nobody has to tell me you are a strong man. I know that. But you weren't there when I was a weak man. So I can't let you dog my strength. Because where was you when I was panicking over everything? Oh, y'all ain't to, thought I was dying from the first stroke, Bell's palsy, marriage didn't work, suicidal, trying to drink a whole bottle of NyQuil, taking five sleeping pills, woke up early and vomited. Negro, where was you? And then you let people try to now kill what God has built? Look, somebody tell them, no way. That's not the way it's going down. Before you misread someone, ask them their story. Don't create one. Ask. I need your foundation, the part of the process that's invisible after something has been placed upon it. Everybody will always say that's a beautiful house, but they'll never say that's a strong foundation. The house will only remain as beautiful as the storms it can handle. 
I think for three folk will clap that Shabak has a strong foundation because with all the storms that I've seen come through this place, for you to still be strong enough to do what you do, this is a building not made by hand. I love where God has placed us in an area where we're not supposed to grow. We're in South Apopka at a dead end, at a dead end road. No break-in, no murders, no funerals. Y'all ain't talking, I'm trying, I'm trying. What, what? In an area that's infested with crime. Rennis works for the funeral home. He just picked a body up next door. How do we interpret our faith? Your faith is interpreted by how you stood the storm. If you believe that God is with you and you're standing on a firm foundation, clap your hands and tell God thank you. Everyone standing, get a good seed in your hand. Pray for me as we travel tomorrow. Going to Charlotte, play something nice, son. You're late. I don't want to be on somebody's blog for rebuking musicians. They'd be like, look at him. The person that you're standing next to right now is about to become strength to what's trying to wipe you out. No, seriously, look at them and see if they understand. What you're basically asking them is, can I count on you? Like, can I be the person you pray for until Sunday? Don't speak over me, don't lay hands on me, just talk to God about me. And tell God to do what's best for me. And tell God, my pastor said I'll have it before August was over. And for some of y'all, I don't brag, but we already got 24-hour miracles that I ain't said nothing about. I have not said anything. Something's off. I've not said anything about the awesome testimonies that I received since Sunday, how they got it by Monday. It's crazy. All you have to do is Believe God and keep your faith in a healthy climate. Stop taking God to places he don't like to go. You would not want your little child to go with you to a strip club. Stop thinking God's going with you everywhere. Because he's not. You see how people, God's grace, God will follow you. Do, no, God is not doing all of this. Over the years that I've been saved, not preaching, I've gone places where I know God said, you're going in there by yourself. And when I came out, it was by grace. It wasn't because God was in there with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley. I want this church to become a trendsetter. I want this church to become something that people want to model after. I don't want it to be perfect because there are no perfect churches. There are no perfect preachers. There are no perfect anything. But when we can learn that each person is a story in its own. 
and everyone's the way they are because of something they experienced that you may have never experienced and respect their narrative. I don't hear nobody. And respect that God is working something in them even though it does not fit how you were raised. Respect people's steps. I showed one of my sons, this is humorous, don't go looking for it, but I showed one of my sons a bodybuilder who was disabled. Like he's completely disabled, but they gave him the opportunity to walk across a bodybuilding stage. And he walked crippled and everything, but he flexed his muscles and looked around, and my son and them started laughing. And I let them, because it was what I wanted to see. After they finished laughing at him, I said two things, and I'll see who screamed. His body better than yours. And at least he got a stage. Y'all ain't talk. Some of y'all, some of y'all laughing at people, but you ain't got no stage. Even disabled, he put in the work to look like he looked. You have all of your faculties. Oh, you saw it too. He posed perfect. And as soon as I show Elder Franklin and me, we said we ain't got no excuses. Ain't enough time in a day. You retired. You got enough time in your life. There is enough time. God never gives you a turn without time. Y'all remember that. It'll come back in a sermon in the future. God never puts you into anything that he don't give you time for. I spend all my time at work. That's you. That's what you want to do. But God never gives you or places us in anything that he doesn't give us time for. I want your offering to look just a little different than last week. I want it to have faith in it. Amen. That doesn't mean give big. That doesn't mean give small. It means give better than you do. Make it look like you want God to bless you in the financial area. I want God to bless my finances. But above my finances, I put my health first. As you get older, the money takes a backseat. While you're young, money is first, health is later. When you get older, I want my health. Because money can't buy that. Amen? All right. Life, health, and strength. Bring your offerings. Come quickly, whatever size. Make it look good. I'll know if it's healthy. That's where I'm going tomorrow. I like that. You woke me up. You woke me up. Put food. Everyone standing one more time. You woke me up this
Come on. 